You're on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is The Triage Room. The Triage Room is a podcast that encourages and empowers listeners to overcome obstacles of pain. Pain is the physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. When we describe the type of pain we're having, we're really describing the symptoms. Once we identify the symptoms, then we can deal with the root. Welcome to The Triage Room. You're now on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is the triage room. Today's topic, misplaced confidence. The dictionary says that confidence is the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something, firm trust. In relationships, whether they be personal or work-related, it is wise to pay close attention to patterns and cycles. For example, in the workplace, A good supervisor would not place a major project into the hands of someone who has a history of incomplete tasks. A parent would not give important documents to a son or daughter to mail off or keep in their possession if the son or daughter has consistently misplaced their own basic items. A family member would not give another family member personal identifying information, knowing they live a lifestyle of being dishonest, Proverbs 25 and 19, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Unfaithful here is to act treacherously, deceitfully, untrustworthy, unreliable. Time of trouble is tightness, adversity, distress, tribulation. A broken tooth and a foot out of joint equals pain. So confidence In an unreliable person during a time of tightness or distress is going to cause you pain. Some of us have made the mistake of placing our confidence in others who were unreliable. This was done because of various life situations we may have faced that presented themselves and at the time relief from the trouble was the focus versus using wisdom and considering the source. This is where we should not operate out of desperation. Operating out of desperation will cause you to not operate in wisdom. You'll make decisions that when you look back, you'll say, why did I do that? What was I thinking? Because desperation moving it is in something that's an urgency. It has to happen right now. If you don't move in wisdom, you will make wrong choices. You'll make bad choices, bad decisions, things that you'll look back and say, I knew better than to do that. What was I thinking? So it's it's not wise to make decisions out of desperation. Yes, it may be an urgency at that moment, but take a time to step back. Think before just jumping into it because there are a lot of unreliable people who know and can tell, you know, through your voice, you're desperate. They can look in your eyes and tell you're desperate. They can look at you and say, hmm, and they have ill intention. They already know whatever it may be. They're not going to make good on what they say they're going to tell you they're going to do. But when they see you operating out of desperation, they know that that's an opportunity for them to capitalize on that. So moving out of desperation is not a healthy thing. It's it's not a wise thing. Yes, the situation may be something that's important in that moment, but we should take a step back and really use wisdom before making a decision to put something in someone's hands that's unreliable or something that we know we should not do because based on history, based on their track record, based on what they have already displayed, this person is known to be unreliable. So we got to think before we make a decision that will cost us in the end. For example, let's say you have a job interview and your car is broken down. So you call up a friend or family member to give you a ride to the interview. You're very clear in telling them where you are and to please pick you up as soon as possible. They agree to come and pick you up immediately. They promise they will be there and they are walking out of the door at that very moment. And they're on their way to pick you up where you wait and you wait and time has come and gone and you're texting and calling to see where they are and they are a total no show. Now you're kicking yourself because You're saying, I knew better than to ask them to do anything. I should have called a cab. I knew better than to rely on them. Once you begin to go down memory lane and reflect, you realize the only time they really have shown up is when it benefited them. And this happens. You know, 
when we sit and take a moment and the dust really settles and we really look at the bigger picture, it's like, what was I thinking? Yes, it was a moment of urgency. And during moments of urgency, we should really take the time to think, you know, how should I go about this? Why call on a person? Yeah, they may be available. And then sometimes it's the case. You know, sometimes it's like, well, everybody else I know are busy. They, they're working or they have other things. But why not take a chance in asking someone, you know, you know, a reliable person. They, they've been known to be reliable. And it may be a tad bit of an inconvenience for them at that moment, but you know they'll come through, right? And with that being said, you call someone because you know their schedule permits them to come. Maybe they're not working. Maybe you know you know their schedule is wide open and they have plenty of time to do it. And yet you know this person. You, I mean, you've already experienced. You know them to be the type of person that are no shows. But you take a chance on something that you sh that's not even. Um, something that you can even afford to take a chance on. It's a job interview, a job interview that, okay, now you're talking about livelihood and it's like a domino effect. So here's someone you reached out to during a time of distress, during a time of trouble, your car broke down, you're calling them to come get you. You're on your way to the interview. They promise they're going to come, you know, they're walking out of the door. You're like, okay, cool. And you're looking at the time. Okay, perfect. And you keep looking at the time and there are no show. And now you've missed the job interview in which you need it. You missed that. And now you're frustrated. And now you're kicking yourself because when you reflect, you knew better. But because of the situation, the circumstance you were faced with at that time, you figured, OK, I know that they're available. But this is where you have to weigh things out and say, OK, can I risk not making it to this interview if this person does not come through? Measuring all things at the same time. If I call this person and I know they're reliable, however, I know they're probably occupied at this moment. Should I call them instead and, you know, let them decide whether or not they'll, you know, take the opportunity to step away for a moment to come assist me with what I need in this moment versus calling someone I know has had a history of not showing up. Now let's look at close personal relationships. A person shows you who they are by what they do. A lot of times we can get caught up and what someone says they will do and what they are saying sounds good and it masks what we should be paying attention to, which are patterns and cycles, the things that people do, you know, and it's pretty much what happened in the last scenario. Here's someone, you know, about the car breaking down and they told you, but you've already known that they're not going to, they've already shown you they're not going to show up. They've, they've done it before. So in close personal relationships, you know, we pay attention to patterns and cycles, seeing, okay, not just what they say, but let's watch what they do. What they're saying sounds good and it masks what we should be paying attention to, which are patterns and cycles. Their words sound great, but their patterns and cycles show they have a history of not doing what their words say they're going to do. There are a lot of people that deal with this in relationships. You know, um, one, of the, one of the most common phrases, you know, someone may hear is, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. I promise you, you know, it won't happen again. Now it's your decision to accept you know, this, this apology that you're getting, it's your decision whether you're not whether or not you're going to accept the apology that you're getting, you know, that it won't happen again and say, OK, and risk hearing those same words again, along with experience, the same pain that comes with it, with you misplacing your confidence, putting your confidence in an unfaithful person in time of trouble. OK, in time of distress is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Or you can think to yourself, you know, I can't guarantee if they will or if they won't do it again. But one thing I can guarantee is whether or not it'll be with me. So if they do it again, I won't be around. If they don't do it again, I won't be around. And these are the type of assessments you have to make for yourself. Decisions you have to make for yourself to say, hey, you know, I've seen this person over and over. And, you know, and, and these are the moments where we have to decide whether or not where we're going to put our confidence, you know, confidence in an unreliable person, untrustworthy person, a person who says one thing and does something different. Why would you think because this time they said they're going to do it, that they're going to come through? And it's not saying that people can't change. This is not what this is saying at all because people do change. But we have to decide if we're going to let it be at our, at, you know, at our cost. There has been, you know, a thousand times given. And on the thousand and one time, they decide, okay, now I'm going to do right. Well, it, 
time goes on and life goes on, are you going to continue to put yourself in that line of fire to say, well, this is important. Just like a supervisor on the job. Why would a supervisor continue to give someone who's been unreliable, you know, the opportunity to be unreliable again? Let's start out with the small stuff. Why put a big project in their hands? Last project, they did not meet the deadline. It may have cost others, you know, it cost the company money and it may have cost others positions. A lot of things may have been on, on the table that a lot of things may have been at stake. And this person, one person's wrong move cost other people. So why reposition yourself for that to happen again? You know, let them prove, you know, whatever they need to prove to themselves or let them show they're trustworthy in a different way. You know, don't don't keep putting the same thing in their hands. And then here we go. Last time you did this. Use wisdom. If it's going to cause pain to other people, you know, it's not just one person that, that it impacts. It's, it's others. Just like the scenario with the catching the ride, you know, calling a calling someone to to pick you up and they say they're going to come and you have the job interview. You know, they should have been there. But how we got to think about the cost. What is it going to cost you if I call this person who has a history of being unreliable? Am I expecting too much of them? That's now that's a false expectation. They've already proven to be unreliable. So now that will be on me. And here's my moment of transparency. You know, I have had a history of seeing the small speck of good in people and they got red flags all over the place, but I see the small speck of good. Ignoring the red flags, ignoring the things I should be paying attention to and having more hope and belief in them and seeing the good in them, you know, more than what they see in themselves and just saying, okay, well, and then I end up putting more into it than they're willing to do for themselves. I'm trusting what's coming out of their mouth and saying, well, you know, this time I'm going to do it. Da, da, da. And they've already shown themselves to be unreliable. But seeing that speck of good, you know, and hoping, okay, well, I don't know. It's just something that's there. And, and what I've had to learn through trial and error and being burned several times over and over again, like, okay, I, I got the lesson and I got the lesson real clear. Pay attention. To what people do, pay attention and and look at people and see, you know, this is who they are and not try to, you know, you see the good there, but let, deal with the reality of it. This is who they are. If they've shown you a history of being unreliable, then they're unreliable, not unreliable, but no, they're unreliable. Call it for what it is. You can't put something valuable or something that's important into a person's hands as unreliable and expect whatever results you're looking to get that are painless not gonna happen it's not there there's their reputation of being unreliable and then there's their character that's there because they're not a person of their word they're not gonna be reliable that's just it now people change but why put yourself in a position to always continue to go around that same mountain over and over and over again and they've already shown you this is who they are so misplaced confidence is confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble misplaced confidence so you put confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint putting your confidence in the wrong place is going to cause you pain and just taking a moment to say this is who they are this is where they are and not put yourself in the line of fire of a false hope of a false expectation because that's what it is expecting someone to be something other than what they are is a false expectation you can see the good all day long yes you can lift them up in prayer but deal with the reality of it this is where they are right now and right now what sense would it make for me to put something in a time of distress into the hands of the unreliable see paying attention to patterns and cycles is how we read the fine print the fine print is like the side effects or the risks that come with dealing with certain people. We have to pay attention because no one walks around with a sign that says, you know, uh, I know I might seem like I'm nice and everything, but uh, I'm unreliable. Nobody's going to have a sign that just says that, that they're unreliable and during your time of distress. Don't give them something knowing that they're not going to come through because they're not dependable. They're unreliable. They're unfaithful. Good for the ears but bad for the outcome. So we have to pay attention to the patterns and cycles. You know, watch people. And sometimes you may not know people that well. You're just getting to know. But this is where we don't put our confidence in man anyway. Because if we put our trust in the right place, then we can allow ourselves to see, okay, misplaced confidence is like a math equation. Confidence in 
plus an unfaithful person in time of trouble equals pain. And that's how we have to look at it. Confidence in plus unfaithful person equals pain. And if we take the time to do that math equation, when we're making a, a serious decision on whether we're going to place something in the hands of, you know, into the hands of an unreliable person. OK, I'm going to place my confidence in this person. Are they reliable? Or are they unreliable? Oh, they've been unreliable. And if it's too early to detect, you know, too early to know because you haven't been around them long enough. And it's a situation where because everything, you know, there's some situations it's like, you know what, you have to make a decision. But across the board, whether it's a decision you have to make quickly or a decision you have time to think, either way, we can never go wrong by putting our trust in the Lord. We can never go wrong by seeking God and asking him. We can never go wrong. We ask the Lord, Lord, you know, you know this person better than I do. Now, Father, should I place this in their hands or not? And if we go that route, and that's something that I had to learn over time, you know, because I'm thinking, okay, well, I... I been around this person i've seen this person but just because you're familiar with someone does not mean you know them just because you are familiar with a person does not mean you know every aspect of that individual and god knows us better than anyone else so ask the lord you know lord should i should i not because he knows things that we don't know you know people can smile all day long and seem good you know but he knows the heart of man and if people's heart aren't right, there's ill intent. So that's the best thing that we can do is seek him, ask him, put our confidence in the Lord and then let the Lord let us know. No, that's not that's not a good decision. No, that's not the right person. And there are times when people, you know, and I'm not saying people don't deserve other chances, you know, to, to get it right. But there's some times when people, you know, do have a desire to change, do have a desire to do better. And there are those that will come around. They may have messed up before, but they'll come around and say, you know what? Um, you know, no, you know, I, I'll do it. And they will because they want to do better. But there are those who have no desire. But all I'm saying here is why put things in the hands of somebody who's been unreliable historically, unfaithful, unreliable. And you are in a time of distress. You're in a time where. This thing, whatever it is, is needed. This thing, whatever it is, you know, it has to happen. And so we, we live here in a world where it's, you know, we, we are, it's about relationships in life. You can't just be just you. It, it has to be, you know, each person, you know, you connect to people and there's relationships and we're all here. And at some point, you know, somebody helps somebody do something else. We're all here to help each other in some type of way. Life was about relationships. So at some point you're going to, you know, need someone to, Somewhere, in some way, you're going to need someone for something in some kind of way. But it's just a matter of, you know, who is the right fit for this? And if someone is unreliable, that's not a good fit. That's not the right fit, no matter what it is. And if you put it in their hands, in the unreliable, and you're hoping that they come through, that's a false, uh, that's a false expectation. And then you're left frustrated. You're left disappointed. And then you're left looking at yourself. I knew better. What was I thinking? Why did I do that? I know better than that. When you find yourself faced with adversity or in a distressed situation, confidence should be placed in the Lord. Psalms 118 and 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Whenever you're faced with a time of trouble in your life, remember that misplaced confidence will always cause you pain. Take a moment, step back, use wisdom, and make sure you place your confidence in the right source. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just to say thank you. Lord, I thank you for life, health, and strength. Father, I ask you right now, Lord, that you would just lead and guide those that are listening, Father. When it comes to making decisions, Lord, when it comes to things they may be facing, God, that they don't make decisions, God, in a distressful situation too quickly. That they don't make a decision, Father, to put things in the hands of those that are unfaithful and leave them in a place of disappointment. Leave them in a place, God, of feeling the pain that comes from putting confidence in the wrong place, in the wrong hands, in the wrong source. Lord, I ask you right now, Father, that those that are listening, Father, that come into a place of, of really accepting and receiving the teachable moments, Lord. 
For we learn sometimes, God, through experience. We learn, God, from the things that we may face. That, God, they allow themselves to to go through the process of seeing what it is to make decisions. In in the blink of an eye, the decisions that they're faced with in a moment. To make decisions based on wisdom. To make decisions based on trusting you, Lord. To seek you for direction. And not allow themselves, God, to make decisions based on what is familiar. Putting the confidence in the wrong place. Putting the confidence in the wrong hands and expecting something, Father, that is a false expectation of an outcome. God, I ask you to heal those places, Lord, of disappointment. Heal those places, Father, that have caused him now to be in a place of, of really second guessing when it comes to decision making. Father, I ask you right now, Lord, that you would just continue to lead God and protect Lead God and protect those, Father, when it comes to moving forward in their decision making. The Father, that their eyes will be open to truth and that, God, they will operate in wisdom. And that their steps will be ordered by you. For your words is the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. The Father, they will begin to ask you for wisdom. Wisdom in, in their decision making. Wisdom in which way to go. Wisdom when it comes to whatever they're faced with in a moment, God. In whose hands to place certain things in. For it's not your desire, God, that people operate in a lack of knowledge and understanding. It is not your desire, God, that people operate in a place of putting things in the wrong hands of others. It is not your desire, God, that people continue to make the same decisions that put them in a negative place. But, Father, that it would just continue to move forward and not allow the things that have happened, not allow those places, God, not allow those experiences, God, to keep them in a place that's stuck. But allow those things, God, to be teachable moments in their lives, God, to learn from them, get up and keep moving forward. I ask you to heal the pain, Father, that has come from misplaced confidence. Heal the pain, Father, that has come from that. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. And I glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You all be blessed. Thank you for joining me on deck in the triage room. To get the music you hear in this podcast or to stay connected, visit my website, UrsulaCamille.com. That's U-R-S-E-L-A-C-A-M-I-L-L-E.com. Sign up on my email list. Get merch and more. Have an area of pain you want to address in the triage room? Send your email to thetriageroom at gmail.com. I'm your host, Ursula Camille, signing off. Be blessed. One touch in your life change. Did you know that Jesus reigns? One touch in your life change.